y'all. Tate Fletcher here, Pirate Life Radio. Welcome. Glad to have you. I put these out. I try to do this very regularly. As you've noticed, if you're a common listener, I'm not very regular. It seems like I wait until I get 42 things from people messaging me saying, hey, bro, maybe you could put one out in the world. Love what you're doing. So anyway, here they are. It's my constant struggle to try to stay current and consistent with this. It's a great chat that I had with Keith Jardine, the Dean of Caffeine, you might have heard of him, um, with Mark Sisson, who is the godfather of funk. He is the silver fox. He is the most ripped general. Google pictures, please, take a goddamn moment for some fucking respect and Google pictures of Mark Sisson right now. You will see why they call him the silver fox. That man is like 116 years old, and he is ripped. Like, if you're an Olympic swimmer or something or a gymnast walking by, you'd be ashamed of your fat-ass body compared to Mark Sisson's. He's a guy that's cracked the code, y'all, and he's a dude that's like a visionary. He's started, uh, he's, he might have heard uh, Primal Kitchen. Uh, Primal Kitchen Foods is his food brand. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a meltdown in my brain right now. He's just starting actual restaurants in, I think, four different locations. One in Culver City is going to pop open soon with his son and daughter running it. And it's just going to be all ketogenic, primal, friendly foods, man. And he's a guy that sees a need in the industry and puts out stuff that doesn't have canola oil in it, that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup in it, that's got no bullshit in it at all. And that's just all natural, good for your body to assimilate and burn fuel. <laughs> he and Rob Wolf were two of the forefathers for me that really changed my life when thinking about nutrition and diet. And I hope you really enjoy them. You can find them um, at Primal Kitchen on Instagram. I believe Mark's Daily Apple is his blog, and you can find that, I believe, on Instagram. I know that you can uh, still check that out. He's a guy that's done it for fun and for free, just putting out good information for people for years. Uh, I don't know if the blog is like a subscription thing now or, or whatever, but valuable, valuable information in there. And uh, it was great to catch up with him again. And thank you for tuning in. And I hope you really enjoy this podcast. It's super powerful for me and Keith. And it's it's a great way. I mean, I'm I'm always looking down the road and going, what's next? Who Who's the next, you know, where could I be next? How do, how, do, how do you do it in the future? How do you do it at, at 40 years old? How do you do it at 50 years old? What's a kick-ass life at 60 years old? And, and I really look to these guys, man, as that marker. They're like my lighthouse beacons when I'm out at sea, you know, and they keep me pointed in the right direction because without this help, I mean, I, I look at my friend Harrison who's 92 years old. He's always, he's always been addressed um, with movement and with nutrition for his whole life. No pharmaceuticals, uh, always independent, always a strong thinker, never looking to place blame. I mean, it's like little shit like that. And when I look at how healthy Harrison is, I'm like, it's the same as Mark. It's, it's just guys that are taking responsibility for their lives and for the lives of their community and moving forward with power and grace and finesse and poise and going, how do I do this beautifully through time and space? And man, it was a great podcast. I hope you all listen. I hope you love it. And uh, please check us out at PirateLifeRadio.com, uh, at Pirate Life Radio on Instagram. Get into my DMs. We're having a very exciting, exciting uh, deal at, at uh, it's not a deal. It's a motherfucking contest where you can get your own portable sauna, saunaspace.com, at saunaspace on Instagram. Get into our DMs and get on the mailing list and with that, we're going to do a giveaway, one-of-a-kind Pirate Life Home Infrared Sauna. It's going to be an all-black canvas, dope, custom designs on the outside. Details are going to be announced on the Pirate Life Instagram, Sauna Space Instagram, and through the Pirate Life email. So get on that email list and subscribe to all three of those, at Pirate Life Radio, at Sauna Space. Thank you guys very much. Why? Uh, uh, sauna, you might say. Full body de de detoxification. I'll get through these words. I know there's a lot of syllables. And revitalization of near infrared sauna therapy. Near infrared light and heat therapy penetrates to the mitochondrial level. It provides natural healing <clears throat> and alliance of light and heat. They're beautifully designed, all handcrafted and hand tailored. 
in America by beautiful artisans, man. The detail and attention to detail in this work is phenomenal. When you touch the wood, you feel it. It's, it's been cared for. It's been made with love. Believe that. Uh, I've had one for about a year, and I fucking love it, man. I love it just as a getaway in my home. And I can go in and tune out from the world for 20 minutes, and I get all these badass um, benefits from it as well, from the infrared and thermal infrared light wavelengths. You can try it for yourself, 100-day free trial if you don't want to wait for a giveaway, 100% money-back guarantee, lifetime warranty, right? You can't beat it, at Sauna Space. Check them out. Get onto at Pirate Life radio and you can uh get on our mailing list and it'll sign you up for the raffle all right also brought to you in this one is strength crate strength crate is a subscription box that gives you all the cutting edge tools that you might need to live a better life and that is like from hand wraps to training aids gears snacks apparel uh supplements and it gives you a free month's worth of supplements sandbags olympic rings uh, caveman products are in there all types of stuff you can sign up for it and learn more at strengthcrate.com and you use the code word pirate life for 10 percent off your first box each month they curate the best of crossfit and fitness worlds and offer a box of supplements snacks and apparel you're gonna dig it strengthcrate.com at strengthcrate on instagram also, want to thank Doc Parsley and his sleep cocktail. You can find him at docparsley.com. That's D-O-C-P-A-R-S-L-E-Y.com. And uh, it's just badass. He's a Navy SEAL that is a doctor for the Navy SEALs, and he made a product for the Navy SEALs so they could sleep better because he found out that that's why they, a lot of their hormone levels were crashing, et cetera, et cetera, and they're all on Ambien. And, uh, I mean, the guys that he was working with. And all he knew was they didn't have an Ambien deficiency. It's another way pharmaceutical companies are completely fucking you. If you're taking Ambien, get your fucking life together, dummy. Anyway, hit up Doc Parsley. He can help a fool out. Natural Stacks. Thank you guys all the time. At Natural Stacks. Ryan Muncy of the OPP podcast that is the Natural Stacks podcast is a goddamn genius. And uh, you ought to listen to him. Also, Lacey Mackey's on one of the latest OPP podcasts. So is your boy Tate Fletcher. I did a double one because I'm rather verbose. It means I talk a lot. I want to thank my girl Jen up there at Rogue Raw, Oregon. You can look at rogueraworegon.com and, uh, and check out some of their goods, man. They're just good, solid, lovely people. Oh, the universe is opening up with love and gratitude, I'll tell you. My boy, obviously... Avi Beyer up there in San Francisco. Thank you, my friend. Saving lives, man. Veritably saving lives with cannabis and CBD. Can you believe that? 12-year-old kids that are fucking going crazy, having seizures every day. I mean, how does that feel if you're 12 years old and that happens and you're in front of all your friends? And all the fucking manufacturers of pills are going to do is give you some pills? And CBD takes that away? It's been phenomenal, man. Uh, anyway, I, I'm, I'm super, super humbled to know all these great people in this cannabis world. I never thought, I thought, I thought it was a thing in my past. I thought it was a thing when I was a kid and like, and, and now you look at the healing properties that are happening and uh, I see it all over, man. I see it with young kids. I see it with my friend Harrison and, uh, what a beautiful time to be alive, huh? Thank you. RogueRawOregon.com. Also my boys up there at, uh, at Jumbo Superfoods, man, <sighs> they're phenomenal, and um, they've got a lot of great stuff. Really easy. I think one of the problems I hear Rogan talk about a lot. One of the problems with with uh, cannabis, especially with the, the THC, which he uses, is that it's you never know how that's dosed. Really, they're like, eat a quarter of this gummy bear, and he's like, just the foot or the leg or how much is too much, and it's uh, you know it's a thing. What Jumbo's done is a really cool thing, man. They've they've uh, um, they've made a spray that is down to like three milligrams or something of, of CBD. You know exactly how much you're taking, and it's really really phenomenal. Uh, the kind of results that are happening for normal everyday people and enhancing their lives, and uh, and I'm not saying that in in 
a way of, of escapism or something like that. These are people that are fundamentally challenged by different things every day and that their lives are better and, and problems alleviated due to the infusion of CBD into their lives. And it's, it's fantastic. And we're not talking about potheads or bliss junkies or whatever right now. We're talking about health and wellness for a new world. And, and it, all this stuff is going back to the earth, back to mother earth and back to the universe. And, and this holistic idea that we are not separate, man. We we're, we are the same organism and we need to help each other. And I really want to thank my boys, Jordan and Kyle up at Jumbo for that. And so check them out. Uh, Jumbo superfoods.com or uh, I think you can find them at Jumbo superfoods on Instagram and as always caveman motherfucking coffee now the motherfucking is not in there for the Instagram nor for the dot com Lacey would not allow that and so it's just caveman coffee.com or at caveman coffee co on instagram you can find all kinds of great deals on coffee mct uh different locations that are up new giveaways that are happening you can see that that hot motherfucker josh goldstein running around in his caveman gear uh which is a one-piece lycra swimsuit if you're queasy or uneasy about that maybe don't look at that i don't know but he picks girls up off the ground like you wouldn't believe he's like a, a real superhero there, there he could be a superhero that could be a thing. He could go into being a superhero. We'll think about it. Maybe I could manage him. Anyway, and I want to thank all my boys down at the warehouse. Moses, Eric, Josh down there. Uh, Josh has no Insta. You should see that. Josh has no Insta. It's one of the most interesting people ever. If you ever are lucky enough to get an email from Josh, you're going to cherish it because the man is a genius and, and the work that he Moses and Eric are doing down there is just second to none. So big shout out to the boys. I also want to thank flight socks. Oh, Oh, I got that through Josh, Joshua Brown. God bless you, man. Flight socks, F L Y T E socks dot com. And, uh, they're the most comfortable. I got some fat ass. I mean, it looks skinny on me, but Believe me, I'm 240 pounds, man. Those socks, they choke the shit out of the bottom of my legs. I fucking hate them. I hate socks. I wear those little prissy looking socks that look like a woman's uh, tennis sock with the short ankles. How gay are those? Not gay in a good way either, okay? So don't yell at me, you goddamn social justice warriors. You know what I mean. <coughs> Horrible. These flight socks, man, loose, comfortable. I believe they're made from bamboo, which I don't know how because they're soft as shit. They're the fucking, they're so nice, so fashionable. There's never a time when anybody sees my socks. I was just on this show, Waco. Uh, we're filming a show about Waco, Texas. Oh, my God. Can you believe that? It's crazy. If you all don't know about Waco, Google Waco, Ruby Ridge. Maybe we don't go into the Oklahoma City bombing, but holy God. I've been on set with an FBI negotiator, and then one of the guys he was negotiating against that was in the Branch Davidian compound that David Koresh was running back in 92, I think it was. Oh, anyway, heavy duty, man. So I go there, and then wardrobe is, they see my pants sneak up, and they go, what are those besides fantastic? I was like, well, they don't see them anyway, whatever, whatever. But you're not, so my point is you're not going to get a peek at them. But even people that are like, hey, you're not wearing your wardrobe are like, they're goddamn impressed when they see flight socks because they're dope and they're comfortable. And I don't think, I mean, there's all these other, there's Stance and there's a thousand other ones out there. There's nobody that holds a candle to these guys. So uh, check them out. I'm going to find out. Just bear with me while I double check right now. Yeah, at flight socks, F-L-Y-T-E. S O C K S at flight socks. They're a nice brand from those goddamn beautiful people in Canada. Shout out to Canada. What up? Yeah. The world's premier bamboo sock company. Know about that flight socks. Love them. Thank you guys so fucking much. Also caveman coffee co dot a U my Australian brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for all your support. God bless you, man. I, I really, uh, it's amazing what this thing has become, this caveman coffee thing. And wait till you see what happens next. Anyway, hope you enjoy this. Peace out, y'all. Love each other. Get some hugs.
The big Tate Fletcher. Powerful Tate Fletcher. Is a, is a real alpha male. Weightlifter. He's a stuntman. Movie star. Robust, enthusiastic individual. He's huge, by the way. He's like a monster person. One of the sweetest guys I know. He's bigger than life. Actor. Entrepreneur. A fighter. The jiu-jitsu technician. He's also bald and he has all these tattoos. He's just a big fucking man. Uh, a man, a myth, a legend. Tate, Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. What's up, Tate Fletcher, you bad motherfucker? Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher is Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Teddy bear. Motherfucking Fletcher, ladies and gentlemen. That's Tate Fletcher, everybody. The great Tate Fletcher. <laughs> Tate the animal Fletcher. Tate the savage Fletcher. Always moving. There's no stillness with Tate Fletcher. You will find no dust. Tate Fletcher's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He just said the word erection. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher's in the fucking house. Tate Fletcher! Tate really blasts out some serious, hardcore truth bombs, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. You do? I love it. Get out of here. No, I'm into it. I'm into Did it. You hear me mention K-Man twice? I mean, I'm over there. I'm just a little embarrassed over there sitting Indian style, <laughs> cross-legged. There's 500 people listening, and then the state. Uh, that was great. Thank you. That was fantastic. Yeah. If I were a billionaire, I'd still be drinking caveman coffee. Yeah. You know that, that question when it came up on the panel for you guys? It was, uh, um, what, like, what would you, how would your life change if you yeah. came into an obscene amount of money? And, yeah. and for me, I, like, I, I remember I was on, uh, on that one, uh, we were on a movie set with this guy, and he was really, he was uh, hard to be around a little bit, but um, Keith wanted to choke him out really badly. Oh. But uh, uh, there, there's a guy that was a, a Navy SEAL that was also on the same team as us, yeah. and he he says, "Man, if I want, there's like a huge lotto going, like a 500 million dollar lotto or something." Yeah. He says, "If I won that, man, I would tell everybody to fuck off, and I would just go on with my life." And 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 he says, "What would you do?" And I go, oh, "I'd be here. To, I'd be here tomorrow." Yeah. And yeah. and I was like, yeah. and and he says, "Fuck you." I'd shoot you right in the face if you came here tomorrow. God damn it. You know, you go to the beach and just drink all the time or something. I go, I said, I'm not looking to escape, man. I was like, I, I, I would do this, and then I guess I would put millions of dollars into our own movie, and we would all make it, and it would yeah. be great or something. Yeah. But, like, that, that whole thing about your life changing, it's like you're looking for something. You're looking for the wrong stuff. Yeah. If the, only, the only thing that I didn't say that I would do that's differently, my wife and I have had this discussion a lot. I have all the house I'll ever need. I have all the car I'll ever need. I have all the, the kids are great um the only thing is i'd fly private fly private <laughs> really oh i hate traveling so much because of the airports because of the traffic to get there when you fly private which i do a fair amount because i have friends who own planes um you know they leave when you show up right yeah. five and minutes later you drive to the plane you drive to the plane you drive out to the i mean that's no, cool no, i'm telling you man so that's the only that's the only kind of thing on my wish list right yeah it's kind of weird when I think about flying private and there's no rules, like there's no security, there's no TSA, there's no, and people worry, like with all the security about, we need to, we need to enforce the planes with heightened security yeah. measures. The terrorists are rich too. They could have private planes and do whatever they wanted with it. It's yeah. like, it's kind of almost easier that way. I know. Anyway, I would, I would, I would love that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Because to travel, when I even think about doing the logistics of going to Vegas, I was like, three and a half hours in the car, or, or yeah, I drive a half an hour to the airport, and then I wait for an hour, and then I fly for an hour, and then an hour between the airport and the hotel, I'm already at three and a half hours. Yeah. The difference is it could be five and a half hours driving. It's true. It's true. Because yeah. of the traffic, and yeah. there's nothing worse than getting stuck on that traffic. Vegas traffic's the yeah. worst. That yeah. desert yeah. is, yeah. Oh, right. man. How's your show been? It's been great. It's You've been, been here all the time, just a hundred, a hundred yeah, conversations. Yeah, yeah. I started, I st yeah, at least. Yeah. How is? Are we recording? We're recording. Nice. Man. I love it. Okay. I mean, why not? Oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to sneak it in. Yeah, that's good. Well, um, I go. I, I, I've had a hundred conversations on here, yeah. and I'm like, God, I wish I'd recorded. It. There's so many inspirational <laughs> yeah. people around here, yeah, and yeah. like, just nuggets that you get where you're like refreshed. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm so to your question, I got here Wednesday night, and there was a business building uh, uh, health and wealth thing that uh, Keith and Michelle put on on Thursday. So I was in a couple of uh, deals there. I spent two hours at uh, Whole Foods Corporate. Uh, really interesting conversation where we were. They were interested in finding out what the yes. definition of paleo was, and um, <laughs> and I you know, Whole Foods they, Corporate was. Yeah, yeah. because they you know they they, they want to get in more and more into that space, and they want to do the right thing. And God bless them for making that choice. Sure. Uh, but it opened a huge conversation about where the fringes are in paleo. And, you know, do you include those 55 grams of sugar in a paleo right. treat? Jesus. Right. You know, yeah. uh, uh, those kind of products. Right. That's called a Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's too cool. yeah whatever. It's a... Yeah. Uh, um, so, but it was it was more of a um, the philosophical thing. Like paleo isn't defined by one guy or even one company, but it's basically this um, community derived. Uh, nebulous at times mass that sh keeps shifting there was a while when there was no rice or potatoes or legumes allowed and now there's some cold potatoes because that became part of the resistant starch right. movement to feed your gut biome which wasn't even an issue five years ago but now nobody was talking about now that it's at on all. the top yeah uh, you know, and what oils qualify because there's a spectrum of oils from really awesome ones to really nasty yeah. ones and where you draw the line. So it was a great conversation. We, uh, I love your definitions. When you're, you're giving a talk once I was listening to... And then somebody says that's not prime, that, that, that's not paleo or something. You, you, you said no, maybe it's not. I don't know, but, but, it, when but they, it is primal, and I get to say because I made that up. Like, <laughs> I was like, that's, that's right. awesome. I, uh, I get to say what's primal. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. get a T-shirt made like that. Tonight, Hagen Das is primal. <laughs> That's uh, um, an interesting thing because with the organic movement and everybody, and the general population thinks if it says organic, yeah. then I'm, I'm doing good. You know, Jesus is shining on me or whatever the thing is, and and how that's just become such a marketed term, and now it really does mean something to the federal government, not just as a marketing thing, but it has to has it's, there's a certain onus that yeah. it carries, and and I wonder like as this changes, I, I heard that this was going to change, the Paleo Effects was going to change the name also. Uh, it's not. I'm not I'm not at liberty to say, but I've heard that from very reputable sources. Yeah, yeah. The name will change next, next year. And I think that the intention isn't to change um, the, the attendees, uh, the speeches, I should say, the talks, the nature of the science behind it uh, isn't intended to allow a, a greater breadth of products, for instance. Right. But it's to invite a greater number of people in who otherwise have assumptions about paleo that may be negative. For I hope that's reason. what it is. Yeah. I hope yeah. it's not that it's going to bring in no, I don't think so. Huge. No. You know, like like a Fit Expo is like it's awesome, but it's also got such a Fit ridiculous Expo. aspect yeah. to it. It's like if yeah. that's what you're looking for, yeah. Michelle, that's not the that's yeah. not the mark to shoot towards. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. I, I, what, what do you think? I was just talking to this guy. Do you know uh, John Arbuckle? No. He does I do. Rome sticks. He's a pig farmer. Yeah, okay. And he... And he, he's got this. He's got a, a, a closed uh, circuit farm where the animals come in and they fertilize and they tromp the earth and they. Grow. And so he's got these pigs. He's done experiments where he's only grown kale, so uh, just a whole hill of kale, and they eat all the kale, and then all pumpkins, and then all all he says all deer bones, I guess. Like he's in Missouri, yeah. and uh, before they market it, but he goes, man, then they get they get thirsty for for meat, and he said they grabbed my jacket once and started to pull me into I was like this is a movement but anyway yeah. th those kinds of movements are so exciting and I think it's more and more now like I, I, I keep waiting for the powers that be whether it's Cisco Foods or whomever to crush it but it, it seems like it's catching steam this no it is I mean I you know I, I'm so proud within our community of, of Epic and, and their being sold to General Mills, and the, and the the interesting thing is the number of the, the amount of feedback and, and um, pushback that the community gave initially, like oh my God, you're selling Huge. out to the devil yeah. or whatever, and whatever, and and uh, to hear Taylor say, look, the reason I'm doing this is I think we could change General Mills, and that's how it happens. You yeah. can't, you know, you know, there's one way where you you know you, you we try to do uh, you know one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, but how do you leverage this technology that we have, this movement that we have, this awareness? That we have. How do you leverage it in a way that's most meaningful uh, and and happens in a uh, in the shortest amount of time? Because if we just 
continue sort of on the scale we're right. doing, it'll be 1% per year growth, and that's just not going to get us where we need to do no. In order for us to be, you know, uh, the, the new standard, we have to have, you know, at least 27%, I think, is the number of the population adhere to that way of eating. We're a long ways away from that, but once we get to that tipping point and that critical mass, then all of a sudden it becomes a real thing and right. becomes acknowledged by... It's the already cool because you see it change on menus. Like, more and more, there's more restaurants now, and that is, that's exponentially being expedited where people and that's a consumer driven yeah. we're asking for gluten free we're asking for low sugars we're like so in the, in the super package, interested in the in package that. delivery the meal delivery um, business that's arisen in the last four or five years where people are they're created um, prepared meals that are then shipped to the house the number one requested meal is paleo um, th there's a lot of uh, paleo options on menus now. Certainly the gluten-free, the grain-free, the dairy-free, the soy-free, but now there's actually people asking for paleo. Um, time for a shameless plug, but I have a new company that Primal, I've heard about this. Primal Kitchen Restaurant. And, so and it was, uh, if you, I don't know if you've walked by our booth yeah. and seen our menu, but everybody what looks at our menu goes, holy crap, yeah. yeah. like really good looking food. And we never m mention paleo in any of our marketing materials. Right. It's just good food, which by the way, yeah. happens to be wickedly healthy yeah. and good for you. That's what I love paleo about can go ahead. Ahead. They'll find that. That's what's they'll find cool it, about exactly. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, they'll, and, and they'll pay for I mean, that's the other aspect when they were talking about commerce and stuff yesterday on the panel and I thought man I'm happy to pay three dollars more for a steak if I know where it's from what it's fed and like it's not it's a no-brainer in yeah. a way and, and and that kind of thing where you're uh, supporting your community like how do you support your community well you're, you're conscious of all those things instead of going well I can do that cheap like because that stuff didn't exist and, and what struck me was your mayonnaise for instance and like I, I remember a few years ago when you were talking about making condiments and going into that and I thought how awesome would that be like yeah. and because you think about how when you start to eat healthily the first thing that comes to mind is like salad dressings like all these because you think you're nailing it yeah. and then you're like oh you can't have ketchup Tate and you're yeah. like oh there's there's sugar no it's high fructose corn syrup it's not even sugar it's yeah, like yeah. and and so that, like you get to that and then to have a mayonnaise that they could, so then when I started getting conscious of it, and I go, okay, well, I, I need to get back. I wanted to go into ketosis uh, for this thing, and, and uh, I'm just eating tuna fish and chicken salad and all that. And then I start reading the ingredients, even at Whole Foods, and it's like cane sugar. I mean, their mayonnaise is yeah. canola and cane sugar. Yeah. And I'm like, motherfucker. And they, think it's, yeah. and they think it's like it's in the it's in the healthy section of a health yeah. food store. Yeah. yeah. It's why, and, yes. that, and that's the thing, too, is that Whole Foods has a responsibility because all the people that aren't, that are just taking it for granted of what's there and they're not reading labels they go whole foods healthy organic i'm in and i'll get whatever and it's going to be good for me yeah. and it's like they have a kind of a responsibility to raise the bar and they have an opportunity to raise the bar sure and, and in their defense uh you know they've tried to stay on the forefront of yeah. the movements and the movement changes over over the years so there was a time when canola oil was considered superior to butter superior to lard or any animal product was uh and and all of a sudden is you know they they, um, as, as well as all the manufacturers, embraced canola because they thought, oh, we're, we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. Well, canola is now the new high fructose corn syrup, right. uh, in my estimation. So, you know, we're trying to lead. What are the deleterious parts of canola oil? I mean, because when I look at high fructose corn syrup, it's like wh whether it's diabetes and whether it's yeah. training your body to burn sugars <laughs> in a heightened way. And whether, like I heard a story about a guy that moved down to Mexico City. He was drinking 15 Cokes a day here. Uh, he went down there. He went into like a diabetes shock because he wasn't getting the same hit on yeah. his insulin that he was from the Cokes in America. That's interesting, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, canola Yeah, oil. no, I mean, so canola is just the way it's processed. Uh, it's not the, the, the original product from which it's derived uh, is pretty nasty in and of itself, the rapeseed, but then the processing of it, the deodorizing de de of it, um, the fatty uh, profile of it, uh, the omega-6, omega-3 ratios, uh, you know, we could go on and on. It's, it's, it's inflammatory in some regards. It's polyunsaturated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, any of the any of the polyunsaturated fatty acids you have a you you sort of have this um, um, you're, you're you're digging yourself out of a hole to begin with because they, they lend themselves to uh, oxidation more than consuming a That's saturated fat. Frustrating. I think uh, I think I was reading one of your blogs anyway. So okay, this is the thing I'm doing. I'm, I'm getting all my polyunsaturated fat because I was doing the vegetable chips and all that stuff that all the vegetable oils and, and it. Some of the 
at Whole Foods, whereas we got to prepare foods, is, is like, okay, this is a really safe place to eat. I'm going to Whole Foods. And everything they had there at that time was canola oil. Well, even the chicken had canola. Yeah, and, and, and again, yeah. it's, you know, in, in their defense.